Hey, today we're gonna go over my transition from the iPad Pro to the Wacom 22, and what I did with the Express Key Remote to make it feel more like I'm using the iPad. I wanna start off by saying, of course, there's no substitute to the iPad's intuitiveness on the market right now. Some could argue that there are Wacoms with touch screens, but anyone who's actually used them know that they're not the same as the iPad. They're not as intuitive, they do have their bugs. That being said, there are some pretty glaring pros and cons between the two things. The iPad, for example, is cheaper and it does have all this intuitiveness with Procreate, but if you're trying to work in large print sizes, which a lot of professional artists are, you're gonna have a bad time. The iPad, even with it specced out, is not going to be able to handle what a PC can. And that just makes sense. As technology continues to evolve, I'm sure we will have iPads that can do more and can draw out larger print sizes, but for the time being, this is what we got. So I want to also say that I'm not going to stop using my iPad. I still use my iPad all the time and I love to sketch on it because I am so much faster sketching on my iPad than I am on my Wacom 22 for all the reasons listed above. It is just more intuitive. When you get to a point where you need to start drawing in larger print sizes or you have larger file sizes for whatever reason, whatever the work you're doing requiring, say you want to do live 2D rigging or even 3D rigging, it's gonna start getting harder and harder on the iPad the bigger your file sizes are. That's when many people take the jump to using a tablet connected to a computer. And you don't need the Wacom 22. You don't need a Cintiq for that. You can still just use a budget tablet cheaper even than the iPad and connect that to your PC and get everything that you need from it. There are plenty of professional artists who do this. That being said, there is a disconnect between looking at the tablet and looking at a monitor. Some people prefer that. Some people struggle with that. With anything, practice will make you better at it. I did it for years and I started with a bamboo, a Wacom bamboo tablet and then I I switched to an Intuos 3. So I fully understand. This is just comparing specifically these two things for people in case it helps anybody trying to decide which price range, because they are similar in price, which thing would be better for them based on the situation that they're in. So we've got some fan art of offline TV that I did here. And I'm gonna show y'all now how I set my Express Key remotes to make my Wacom feel more like my iPad Pro. This is the Wacom Desktop Center. And then you are gonna click on your Wacom Tablet Properties, which is this Express Key Settings button. There's a few things with the iPad and Procreate that make it feel so intuitive and just like you're drawing on paper. At the end of this, it's not going to be exactly the same. The iPad is still more intuitive than doing all of these things, but this just makes it a bit Better. Now I had to go into Clip Studio Paint and create some of my own shortcuts, so I'll walk you through that as well. Alright, so let's go over some of the settings that I did. I kept this as settings. I did this to make it fit to screen so you could quickly zoom out and see what's going on. I did this one to rotate, this one to brush, this one to flip horizontal, this one to reset rotation, this one to actual pixels instead of just being fit to screen, which I'll show you the difference in a moment, and this one to my app shortcuts. And you can customize these however you want, I just found that this was the best set up for me currently. Then the inner keys, we've got shift, alt, control, and space. I think these are the default and I kept them that way. I liked how they were. I wanted some quick action things. So we've got undo, redo, save, new layer, and the brush panel. So let's get into how these actually work. And for example, like this one, the fit to screen, and I think reset rotation and actual pixels. So I think some of these didn't exist as preset shortcuts and I had to go into Clip Studio Paint in order to set them as shortcuts. Now let's get into how to create our shortcut settings. So let's go to File and Shortcut Settings, it's that simple. All right, here you'll see some of the ones that I've created. So I guess this is a few, if I recall correctly, Reset Rotation was not already a shortcut, uh, nor was Flip Horizontal. So you can go in here and based on the commonly used shortcuts you use, you'll have to use your keyboard and create a keystroke, whether it's just F10 or F11. I just know that those aren't things that I need to use very often. So I went ahead and created them. And so I'll just show you, you can hit edit shortcut and then you would just type right here. So I'll just do it again, 10. But if you wanted to make it F9, you could. I'm gonna keep it F10 just to show you the example. And then you can go through and there's a lot of different ones, but just for the sake of time in this video, just showing you the ones I've done. If you know that you use the select tool a lot, that's something you could add in there. This one, fit to screen. When you wanna create the shortcut, you hit keyboard and then type in the keystroke. So in, in Clip Studio Paint, 
I created fit to screen to be control zero. And then I nicknamed it fit to screen myself. That's not confusing. Again, you'd go to file, shortcut settings, and then fit to screen, control zero. If you wanted it to be something else, you go in here and you just edit that. Same thing if you wanted to change it on your remote, you just pull up your remote settings again and change it. Again, these are the ones that have made my experience on the Cintiq feel more like the iPad. So let's see some of these in action. Say I'm drawing like I just did. Undo, redo, undo, redo. So very quick. Now, if I want to switch to something else on my key ring, you hit that little circle in the center. So now I've switched to true rotate. And if I scroll on that wheel around, it'll rotate my canvas for me. Kind of like pinching and zooming or rotating on your iPad. I've noticed that if you're trying to get this perfectly right, it can get finicky to get it back to normal, which is why I did the true pixels. And then this one was the center one. So let's see that again, using that shortcut to rotate. And then we're using this shortcut to get the fit to screen. I can zoom in real quick to see what I'm doing as if I was zooming on my iPad. This is actual pixels zoomed out. And then we want to recenter it so we have that center fit shortcut. Those were all really important to me in my workflow for making this feel more like the iPad. Next we're going to hit in the center of the remote again and we have brush size. So if I'm drawing doo -doo -doo, undo, undo, I want to make that bigger. I decide I can go like this and make my brush bigger, smaller. Undo, undo, undo. Now we're back to true rotate again. So you can go this way or that way with that wheel. And you can recenter. And then this one is the auto scroll zoom. This one's super important to you, just like. <laughs> and then we're gonna use, I'm gonna make that brush size smaller again. And then we have that center pad here. I'm gonna use that uh, space the very bottom one, and then I can move things around like this as if I'm on my iPad. You'll see a lot of digital artists with tablets doing this move. A lot of them have made it a shortcut. Like I can tell Ross Tran, his shortcut is to actually do it on his pen that he draws with, his Wacom pen. And you can just really adjust things however you'd like. It's really up to you. But those are some shortcuts that for me have really made a big difference. So I want to zoom back out again. We're going to click that shortcut and you'll get used to, you know, you're not going to remember them right away. But as you keep drawing and practicing with these, then you'll start to get the gist of it of where they are. And it'll become muscle memory of where your shortcuts are. And you won't have to think about it so much anymore. So you will get used to it. Concluding, these are both amazing pieces of tech and I will use both of them going forward forever <laughs> uh, for the foreseeable future. Quick on the go sketches or emote work or anything like that, the iPad is perfect and good enough for any of that. Or larger print sizes and things that are starting to freeze up your iPad, which has happened to me with some even smaller images that get too many layers. Then you definitely wanna step up to getting a tablet connected to a computer. It doesn't have to be the Wacom 22, but if you wanna be able to draw on a screen, a six 16 would be just as good as well or any of the other ones that have screens attached. They've been getting so much better in price than when I started out as a digital artist at 15, 13, 12. So don't be discouraged, save your money, get the thing that makes more sense for your scenario. And don't think that you have to have this tech to make it or to be a good artist. It's not necessary. If you watch Ross Tran's video ranking all of the tablets, his favorite ended up being the tablet that I used to use when I was a teenager. And he was actively looking for one on eBay because he doesn't mind the disconnect from looking at the screen to his tablet. So that just proves that you don't have to spend $1,200 on this big mammoth of a tablet. And you also don't have to spend $1,000 on the best iPad that you can get your hands on either. You can get a secondhand Wacom tablet without a screen built in and work just fine. But if you are in the price range for these two things and you are comparing them, that is my comparison. That is how I tried to make my Wacom feel more like an iPad with shortcuts. And if this was helpful for you at all, please hit that like button for me. If you're new here, hit that subscribe. I post new videos weekly. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below and I will respond as soon as I can. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Ja, matane.